Good morning, everybody. This is Sean Copeland. Today is Saturday, March the 16th, and welcome to another brand new, life-changing edition of the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO. Today on the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO, we are going to talk about maximizing our opportunities. And I'm going to tell you kind of where this comes from and why I think it is so important. I was recently watching a video by Clay Christensen, and it is entitled, How Will You Measure Your Life? And in this YouTube video, which I encourage you to watch, it is very, very uh, thought-provoking. It makes you think about how God will view our lives. And Clay has a theory that God, since he is uh, omniscient and omnipotent everywhere all the time, has unlimited knowledge, that what is happening is throughout our life, he is basically measuring the delta between us maximizing our opportunities and our actual performance. So he believes that moment by moment, God can measure this was our potential and this was our actual performance. And I love this because it ties very closely into a devotional that I shared earlier in the week. And I just want to read it to you real quick. Walk by faith not by sight. As you take steps of faith, depending on me, I will show you how much I can do for you. If you live your life too safely, you will never know the thrill of seeing me work through you. When I gave you my spirit, I empowered you to live beyond your natural ability and strength. That's why it is so wrong to measure your energy level against the challenges ahead of you. The issue is not your strength, but mine, which is limitless. By walking close to me, you can accomplish my purposes in my strength. And I want us to think about, in order to maximize our effectiveness, maximize our opportunities, reach the potential that God had within our lives, I want us to think about Hebrews 11.6. And without faith... It is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. How many people do you know, and maybe you are this person, who have chosen to live life safely? Okay, They don't take any risk. Everything they do is to minimize the chances of failure in their life. And I want to ask you, what is the impact of those people? What, what Do they reach their potential for changing the world for the better, bringing people to the kingdom in this life? And I think the answer is no. I think when we decide to play it safe, we give up the potential that God has created within us. Jimmy Carter said, I have one life and one chance to make it count for something. My faith demands that I do whatever I can, wherever I am, whenever I can, for as long as I can, with whatever I have to try to make a difference. So I want us to think about something for just a moment. God has given each of us a small slice of eternity to make an impact, okay? Let's think about, you know, the the world has been around thousands and thousands of years, okay? You and I are here for one slice of of this entire existence. We only have so much time. We don't even know how much time we have. But let's say it's 75 or 80 years. That's it. It is not a dress rehearsal. We don't have do-overs. We have one shot. And I believe Clay Christensen is right. The Harvard professor... I believe is right. I believe God is going to ask if we squandered the opportunities he gave us or if we made the most of them. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. 
The Bible talks about this in a parable called the Parable of the Talents. And I want to to share this with you. It's one of the most profound teachings of Jesus. Uh, It's a story that offers invaluable insights into the utilization of our God-given gifts and abilities. It is in Matthew 25, and this is verses 14 through 18. I'm just going to read a portion of it to you today. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more, but the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Okay, In this parable, the master represents God and the talent symbolize the unique gifts and abilities bestowed upon you and me. The servants represent us, entrusted with these talents to steward them wisely. Notice how the master distributed the talents according to each servant's ability. This underscores the truth that God knows us intimately and equips us accordingly. Now, as you know, what happened is he was very upset with the servant that just buried the talent. He, that uh, was a waste to him. He did not maximize the gift that he had been given. And I want us to just think about the application of this scripture for just a moment. First of all, stewardship. We're all called to be faithful stewards of what we've been given. Just as the servants were entrusted with the master's wealth, we're entrusted with our own talents and gifts. It's not about the quantity of talents we possess, but how faithfully we invest and multiply them. And as you see here, as God, the, the more ability that he thinks we have, the more he is going to entrust us with because he, just like me as a business owner, he is looking for a return on his investment. Number two is initiative. The servants who doubled their talents didn't hesitate. They immediately went to work. Likewise, we are called to take initiative in utilizing our talents for the glory of God and the betterment of humanity. Procrastination and fear have no place in the kingdom of God. Number three, accountability. The master held his servants accountable upon his return. Similarly, we will one day give an account of how we've used our talents. Let us not bury them out of fear or complacency, but invest them wholeheartedly, knowing that God expects an ROI. Leo Biscaglia said, Your talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. C.S. Lewis said, you're never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. In my life, all of the significant moments have been scary and have required faith. Founding Bixby Community Outreach Center uh, down in Bixby. Founding South Point Church. Founding the bank. Founding the devotional. Founding Faith in Business. Writing my first book, serving as Secretary of Commerce, founding 94X, our faith and work movement, all of these were terrifying. All of these I prayed through, all of these I felt led by God to do, and all of them I had doubts, I had fears, I didn't know if I was good enough, I was afraid they were going to be huge flops. I remember with 94X, Back in the last fall, we did a, a summit in Tulsa, and it was one of my teammates' ideas, and I prayed through it and felt that the Lord thought it, you know, it's something we should do. I felt like God uh, anointed uh, the experience, and we started uh, marketing it, and we had very little response, and I thought, oh my goodness, we are going to show up at ORU. We're not going to have anybody there. And then the Lord went to work, and people started to sign up, and we packed out the Global Research Center because it, and it was five or six hundred people, and we couldn't even get in all the people that wanted to be there. It was the most amazing day, but we had to take the leap. 
God cannot do these things on his own. He has to work through people who are obedient to him and have faith. Galatians 5.25 says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. If you will just handle and face your fears, it is amazing what you can do. I remember I was at Oklahoma State University and uh, we had a, a uh, upperclassman named Danny who was really a big, big guy on campus, really well known, very, very successful. And Danny and I went to Brahms to have uh, dinner. We had a, I remember I had a bacon cheeseburger and a chocolate chip cookie dough malt and fries. And we were sitting there and Danny said, Sean, you know, you are so talented, but you are so lost. He said, what are you going to do whenever you graduate from college? And what are you going to do from now until then? And I said, Danny, I am just trying to survive. I said, I'm just trying to get by. And he said, I need you to build a vision for your life and then back that up to today. So I wrote out these five goals that I would achieve by the time I left Oklahoma State University. And they were wild. Like they were, these were goals that I had no chance of achieving under any circumstance. But I mean, things like top 10 senior, president of the College of Ag, president of my fraternity, president of interfraternity council, being on Blue Key National Honor Society. I mean, things that were so far away. I was one of the worst students in my freshman class. I mean, it's, I struggled. But when I built that vision and backed it up to today, okay, one of the things I had to do was I had to take steps. And one of my first steps was to get involved with an extracurricular group in uh, the College of Ag called Block and Bridal. It was a big deal within the animal science department. And so, and it was a big club, uh, three or 400 students, and we would meet in animal science room 123. So I walk into animal science room 123. And when I walk in, this entire classroom is filled with people that all knew each other and nobody knew me. I felt like an enormous outcast. I desperately wanted to turn around and walk out. But if I did, I knew I, w I would mess up my whole plan. I, I would be, you know, giving up on my vision. So I walked in. I found another guy that looked somewhat unpopular as well. I sat down. His name was Chris. I shook his hand. It turned out he was real popular. He was just kind of alone at the moment. He was super friendly, started introducing me to his friends. I ended up being president of that organization and ultimately met all five of these crazy goals. But I had to face my fear and we have to do that in our lives and have faith that God will take care of us. I watch people in my life that are doing this, and it is amazing to me. Our friends at Radio Shema over in Turkey, Carol Ward, who's in some of the scariest parts of Sudan and, and places, Uganda, and places that United Nations workers won't even go. Kyle Jones was a missionary between two warring tribes in Africa. Terry Law and his, uh, he's passed now, but his ministry goes into the, I mean, unbelievable faith that these people have. In the Bible, every major hero had amazing faith. Okay, think about this. Abraham took off. God told him to take off. He didn't even know where he was going. Noah had to build an ark when there hadn't even been rain yet. David had to face Goliath, who was three times his size. The disciples had to step out with Jesus in the face of tons of risk and conflict. Moses, Joshua and Caleb, Peter, when he walked on the water, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Paul, all of the prophets. It goes on and on, but also the smaller examples. The widow who gave her last mite, 
Mary, who washed Jesus' feet with perfume that cost a year's wages, the thief on the cross, the woman with the issue of bleeding. This goes on over and over. These are the people that God has chosen to highlight in all of history because he loves them because they had faith. Now let's close with three misconceptions of faith. First, faith is not something you have or don't have. It's a choice to believe something even when we don't have proof or evidence. You may have heard people say, I have faith when talking about trusting in someone or something, but the truth is that everyone has the potential to develop and strengthen their faith. Another misconception is that faith means never having doubts or questions. In reality, doubts and questions can be part of having faith. They help us grow and deepen our trust in God. We can also use prayer to ask God for strength, guidance, and wisdom as we work through our doubts and questions with Him. And lastly, many people think that having faith means blindly believing without thinking critically about our beliefs, and this couldn't be further from the truth. Faith isn't just about accepting what we are told. It's also about actively engaging with Scripture and discussing our beliefs with others who share them. By seeking out knowledge and dialogue around our faith, we gain insight into why we believe what we do to make our convictions more meaningful. So today, and for the rest of our lives, let's maximize our opportunities. When God calls you to do something, even if it is scary, even if it feels impossible, you have to take that step. When Joshua went into the promised land, God said, I will give you the land where you set your foot. But first, he had to set his foot. He could not sit on the couch and expect God to make everything happen. Living in faith makes life much more exciting and much more impactful. And just like Clay Christensen says, I believe when all is said and done, God will say, well done, good and faithful servant, because we have lived out our potential by living out our faith. So thank you so much for being with us on the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO. Please let me pray us out today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for the examples all throughout the Bible and in our lives of people who live in faith and maximize their potential. Help us to live in this way, Father. Call us to great things. Challenge us and give us the uh, confidence and the power and the faith to lean into your plan for our lives. We thank you, Father, and we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you so much for joining this edition of the Kingdom Driven CEO.